The next item of business is a statement by Annabel Ewing on hate crime. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Annabel Ewing. You have 10 minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, recent news coverage of events around the globe has starkly demonstrated that hatred and prejudice continue to have very serious consequences for people and communities across society. In recent times, we have seen racism and religious bigotry on the rise around the world. These reports and the subsequent and increasingly frequent online furor they generate can lead to increased attacks on everyone, from people from ethnic minority communities to people with disabilities and every vulnerable community that is easy prey to bigots and bullies. Discussions in the media and online about Brexit highlight the need for us to ensure that those from across the European Union who have made Scotland their home feel secure. Scotland is an open and inclusive nation, but we are not immune from such hateful behaviour. Our communities sometimes face prejudice and abuse through both direct physical confrontation and cowardly online hate abuse. Presiding officer, I know that everyone across this chamber would condemn the deliberate targeting of our minority communities with hate-filled prejudice. I am sure that we are all united in seeking to offer our communities the protection they need in law to give them access to justice when they are subjected to such behaviour. Prejudice and hate have a huge impact on the quality of life of individuals and the community to which they belong. Trust becomes more difficult and whole families and groups withdraw into smaller circles of safety with significant consequences for the overall level of trust and social capital across the whole of society. Earlier today, our debate on Holocaust Memorial Day highlighted why we must never forget the injustices that have led to the demonization of communities and horrific acts of genocide. We must be vigilant to ensure history does not repeat itself and that no one is allowed to make scapegoats of our minority communities. We must all of us always bear witness. Presiding officer, this parliament debated the issue of hate crime last November and raised the possibility of a review of hate crime legislation. And organisations such as the Law Society and the Equality Network provided written briefing supporting such a review. The need for robust legislation to tackle hate crime is as great as ever. And that is why today I am announcing that the Scottish Government has commissioned an independent review of hate crime legislation in Scotland. The review will be led by one of the most senior members of the Scottish judiciary, Lord Brackadale. He will make recommendations on how we can ensure that the hate crime legislation that is applied to protect Scottish communities is fit for purpose in the 21st century. The review will be taken forward entirely independently of the Scottish Government. The remit has been placed in spice and I can confirm it will consider whether existing hate crime law represents the most effective approach for the justice system to deal with criminal conduct motivated by hatred, malice, ill will or prejudice. Lord Brackadale's considerations will include looking at whether the current mix of statutory aggravations, common law powers and specific hate crime offences is the most appropriate criminal law approach to take, whether new categories of hate crime should be created for characteristics not currently covered in existing legislation, such as age and gender, whether existing legislation can be simplified, rationalised and harmonised, and how any identified gaps, anomalies and inconsistencies can be addressed. Lord Brackadale will also consider if we need to change or amend the current legislative framework and if it guarantees that human rights and equality, including the right to freedom of speech, are protected. Another central concern of the review is the need to consult all interested parties to ensure Lord Brackadale's recommendations are informed by evidence. That is why, Presiding Officer, Lord Brackadale will be taking forward an open public consultation on the review. In addition, Lord Brackadale has indicated he is happy to meet with spokespersons from all of the parties represented in this parliament so that he can incorporate the views and opinions of this chamber into his findings and recommendations. Presiding officer, the current legislation relating to hate crime has developed over decades in a piecemeal manner and this review allows us an opportunity to take stock 
and to look at all of this legislation in a, a holistic uh, way. This means that the review will consider specifically the wide range of legislation which has an impact on tackling hate crime. This includes the Offences Aggravated by Prejudice Scotland Act 2009, the Criminal Justice Act 2003, and of course, the Offensive Behaviour at Football and Threatening Communications Scotland Act 2012. I am, of course, aware of the views of this chamber in relation to the Offensive Behaviour at Football Act. This government remains opposed to repeal of the Offensive Behaviour at Football Act without a viable alternative. Such a move would take away protection from some of our most vulnerable communities. For example, repealing section six of the Act would leave an unacceptable gap in Scottish legislative protection. Unlike elsewhere in the UK, prior to the introduction of the Act, there was no specific offence in Scots law criminalising threats made with the intent of inciting religious hatred. This was an obvious gap and it was clear that legislation was required to address it. Presiding officer, the review I am announcing today recognises the concerns of this parliament. The review provides a responsible and practical response to these concerns by allowing the act to be considered within the context of all hate crime legislation, which will help to ensure that the overall legal coverage offered to vulnerable communities is appropriate. But let me be clear, presiding officer, this review goes far beyond football. We are determined to ensure that those who peddle extreme and intolerant ideologies, those who admire the hatred of the far right and want to undermine civil liberties and human rights, and those who simply wish to make scapegoats of anyone different to themselves, do not find any foothold. There is no place for such behaviours in modern Scotland. Those who indulge in hate crimes often fear losing their privilege and power, that is the privilege to abuse and power to harm the weakest and most marginalised in our society. Some cannot accept that the only secure future is one where we are able to live side by side as equals, an equality based on trust, respect, and most importantly, understanding. Presiding officer, the laws that have been put in place to tackle hate crime were designed to protect the vulnerable. They make it clear that a modern, forward-looking society will not tolerate hating people simply because of who they are. Now, more than ever, we need to revisit the body of applicable legislation in Scotland and make sure that this fundamental principle is not allowed to slip, that it is not allowed to be lost in the changing global environment. If left unchallenged, this will push people into ever more polarised positions and will simply lead to greater and greater fragmentation of society. We will be vigilant and we will not stand by and let that happen. In closing, presiding officer, I would like to reaffirm the Scottish Government's commitment to tackling all forms of hate crime. I believe that the independent review will ensure Scotland is leading the way in providing adequate and appropriate protection to all communities. I therefore commend this important review to Parliament and hope all parties will engage positively with Lord Brackadale in developing his recommendations and ensuring Scotland can live up to the ideal of being a modern, outward-looking, open and inclusive country. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Minister. And we now move to questions. I'll allow around 20 minutes for questions. And after that, we'll move on to the next item of business. So if members who wish to ask a question could press the request to speak buttons now, that would be helpful. And I call on Douglas Ross. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. On behalf of the Scottish Conservatives, I thank the Minister for the advance sight of her statement and welcome the forthcoming review of hate crime legislation in Scotland. We can all agree that hatred and prejudice have no place in our society, and members on these benches will engage with Lord Brackadale as he embarks upon his important undertaking. The Minister's statement mentioned, and I quote, the wide range of legislation which has an impact on tackling hate crime, but then goes on to focus on just one, the Offensive Behaviour at Football Act. Why are the Scottish Government continuing to ignore the will of Parliament when it comes to this piece of flawed le legislation? Less than three months ago, Parliament voted to repeal the Offensive Behaviour at Football Act, and I remind the Minister that is an act that has been heavily criticised by the legal profession and the judiciary. Why is the Minister including this, uh, 
uh, piece of legislation in the review, instead of setting out a timeline to repeal this Act as clear uh, the will of Parliament made in November last year. Can I also ask, while it is important that the criminal justice system is equipped to deal with hate crime, it is also vital that victims come forward to report their experiences of hatred. I know in the latest hate crime statistics from the Crown Office that disability hate crime in particular particular continues to be underreported compared to other forms of hate crime. So can I ask the Minister to confirm what the Scottish Government are doing to encourage and improve the reporting of all types of hate crime in Scotland and how the Brackadale Review will look at reporting of hate crime as well. Annabel Ewing. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I, I do welcome uh, the very constructive comments made at the outset of Mr Ross's uh, uh, question. Uh, and it is uh, good to hear that uh, the Conservative Party will engage fully with, with uh, this uh, uh, review. Um, on the specific questions that the member raised, uh, on the first question in terms of the position of the Offensive Behaviour Football Act and Threatening Communications Act, sorry. Um, first of all, I mean, I think I, I did actually try to, to reference uh, this review in terms of the fact that it's a very wide-reaching review and I did actually refer to a number of pieces of legislation, but I also felt it was important to reflect the, uh, and to recognise the, the views of this chamber with respect to, to uh, one piece of the hate crime legislation uh, jigsaw, and that is why I spent a bit of time on that, and I think the chamber would have been surprised if I hadn't done. Uh, and our position is clear, and it has remained clear, that without a viable alternative, uh, we do not support a repeal, for the reasons that such a move would take away protections, and I think particularly uh, at this time, and with the threats uh, to, uh, civil liberties and people's rights and to equality that we see uh, across this world, uh, this would be the wrong time to take away protections from people. I think rather what we should be doing, which is the responsible position of this government, is to ensure that the whole body of hate crime legislation is fit for purpose in the 21st century. And that includes the consideration uh, of, of course, a key piece of hate crime legislation being the offensive behaviour at football and threatening communications. Act. With respect to the second question that the member raised about disability hate crime, I agree uh, that there is much more to be done in ensuring that people with a disability feel much more comfortable in bringing forward their concerns. And in that regard, uh, I was very pleased indeed to note the publication of the disability delivery plan uh, that my colleague uh, Jean Freeman uh, uh, published, I think, in early December last year, setting forth some 93 actions, one of which uh, was indeed to ensure that we, the Scottish Government, work with disabled uh, people's organisations and Police Scotland to, to do what we can to encourage more reporting of hate crime incidents. Claire Baker. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I start by thanking the Minister for the advance copy of the statement. The announcement of the review is welcome and we will work with Lord Brackadale. There is a need to ensure that our legislation is relevant to the modern world and its challenges and that racism, bigotry and hatred have no room in our society. Last year, we saw the doubling of Islamic hate crimes and year-on-year -year increases in crimes relating to disability and sexual orientation. It is clear that we must take greater action and ensure that all our citizens are protected. I note that the Offensive Behaviour Act is included in the review. The Minister is aware it is the view of Parliament that the Act should be repealed, and while I note what she says about the impact of removing the Act, we do not share her view that there is no viable alternative, and I believe that the review will recognise this. Um, President Officer, we wish the review well. To support the word, work of Lord Brackadale, the Minister today, sorry, can I start that again? To support the work of Lord Brackadale, will the Minister today commit to publishing a full breakdown of all hate crime statistics, as is currently the practice with the Religiously Aggravated Offending Report, in order to better inform the work of the review? Annabel Ewing. I, I, I would like to thank also uh, Claire Baker at the outset for her constructive uh, comments and her desire to, to be involved in, in the review in terms of making sure that your input and your party's input is, is, uh, is part of the, the work that Lord Brackaday will be taking forward. Uh, I, I would say with respect to the Offensive Behaviour Football Act um, that, uh, as I say, it is a key part of the hate crime uh, jigsaw of legislation in Scotland. It's quite right and proper that as part of this uh, wide uh, consideration of whether hate crime is, is appropriate and effective in 21st century Scotland that we look at that act uh, as well. Uh, I, of course, in the, the consultation of uh, Mr Kelly, who, who's not in the chamber, um, the, of course the Crown Office took the view that actually in some circumstances it would only be uh, uh, capable of securing a, a, a prosecution, a conviction, by using uh, the provisions of the act as opposed to any other provision. And of course, 
uh, Stonewall Scotland and the Equality Network did express concern that uh, simply repealing the Act uh, would send a very worrying signal that somehow this behaviour uh, was acceptable. So now, there are different views, uh, but I, I hear what the member says, and of course this will be part of the, the wider review. In terms of the reporting of hate crime, um, what I would say is that we all need to do much more to ensure that people feel comfortable uh, in reporting hate crime in whatever way it manifests itself, and that is a commitment that we have made. Finally, in terms of the hate crime statistics, I, I will undertake to look into that point specifically uh, and speak to the statisticians as well. I wouldn't want to um, uh, undertake to do things that perhaps statistically we're going to present particular challenges, but I do hear what the member says, and any information that we can bring to the table, uh, I think is the best way to go. Uh, can I ask all members to bear in mind that uh, the longer the questions and answers are, the less chance there are that everyone gets an opportunity. So having said that, may I call Christina McKelvey to be followed by Annie Wells. <laughs> Thank you very much, President Officer. The Minister will be aware that the Equality and Human Rights Commission has raised concerns that the start of formal leave in the EU could cause an increase in crime and a backlash against EU citizens, something which we already saw in England following the referendum in June. How will the Scottish Government ensure that this backlash does not occur in Scotland? You caught me by surprise here. That was very quick for you, Ms McKelvey. <laughs> Annabelle Ewing. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I think I, I won't comment on that uh, exchange there. Um, what I would say is, of course, that immediately after the, the, the referendum vote uh, in June 2016, the First Minister uh, uh, said, and I repeat, citizens of other EU countries living here in Scotland remain welcome here. Scotland is your home and your contribution is valued. And that is a message that we must, all of us, strive to get across every single day, particularly uh, as we see uh, 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 the Article 50 process uh, apparently about to be triggered fairly shortly. And it is a duty incumbent on all of us uh, to ensure that all of our citizens feel comfortable living uh, in Scotland where they have chosen to make uh, their home. Uh, in terms of practical considerations, of course, uh, the hate crime review will be intended to ensure that, in fact, for every citizen in Scotland, hate crime law protects their position, that it is available for all. Uh, and that is a very important feature of this review. Uh, also, uh, I know that my colleagues in the Equalities team are uh, uh, shortly to uh, pr proceed with another uh, hate crime awareness campaign. Uh, and I think that was announced in our debate, excellent debate we had in November last year. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that that will also be a very timely intervention as we uh, uh, approach with some trepidation uh, the months uh, ahead. Annie Wells to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Last June, figures from the Crown Office showed that in Scotland, sexual orientation and disability related hate crime rose by an alarming 20% and 14% respectively between 2015-16. I raised this in the Chamber during a debate in November and I want to ask the Minister again what specific action the Scottish Government will take to tackle these types of hate crime. Annabel Ewing. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Well, on the issue of disability, I, in response to your colleague, I, I did uh, explain that the, the uh, very important development of the Disability Delivery Action Plan, and that has 93 separate actions that are expected to be uh, carried out. So I think that's a very important um, uh, development. And of course, we will work closely with disabled organisations and Police Scotland to encourage greater reporting. In terms of uh, the increase in hate crime, reported hate crime in terms of sexual orientation, uh, I do note the statistics and I find them very uh, worrying indeed. And again, we uh, have proceeded with a number of actions uh, in terms of a whole range of activities, including across uh, the equalities uh, uh, portfolio. Uh, a very significant amount of funding has gone in over recent years. I think in this current financial year, there's some 3.1 million, uh, which is available for a really wide range of projects, trying to, across all areas, ensure uh, that uh, we are very vigilant indeed. Uh, and of course, uh, as we look uh, forward, uh, we uh, do see in terms of uh, the position within our schools, uh, uh, the refresh of the anti-bullying strategy uh, guidance for which is expected quite soon and of course working with the Thai campaigners to ensure that the issues that they have raised are properly addressed. Fulton McGregor followed by Mary Fee. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the, I'd like to ask the Minister what the Scottish Government is doing to tackle the problem of sectarianism that exists across the country affecting people in my constituency and many others. Annabel Ewing. 
Yes, the, the member raises a very important point, and I, I, of course I, I, I would remind the Chamber that the Scottish Government has invested some £12.5 million pounds over the last five years to uh, this, the end of this financial year in a number of very important projects seeking to uh, tackle sectarianism, uh, working through the education sector. I know that there are particular projects involving the Citizens' Theatre, Sense Over Sectarianism, No By Mouth, to name but three. Also, we recognise that education is, is a key element and we have been working with Education Scotland to produce a national resource available to schools. We have, over these five years, committed more than any previous administration and, of course, future uh, uh, funding activity will be informed by the very important review that Dr Duncan Morrow is carrying out in terms of looking at how his recommendations in the 2015 report that his advisory group uh, prepared in tackling sectarianism Scotland to look at how those recommendations are actually being implemented. We expect that work to be produced shortly and we will look at that very carefully to inform the next steps. Mary Fee followed by Kate Forbes. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I welcome the statement today on hate crime. Is the Minister able to provide any further details on the open public consultation? Can she give us any assurances that such a consultation will reach all of those in Scotland who are subject to hate crimes who may otherwise be overlooked, for example, those where English is not their first language or gypsy travellers? Annabelle Ewing. Uh, thank you, Sally. Officer. The member raises a very important point, uh, and it's one that I will ensure gets fed into the, the, the process. It is absolutely the case that anybody that has got something to say has some evidence to, uh, to bring forward, I'm sure, be most uh, gratefully received. In terms of general stakeholder engagement, I'm uh, shortly after this uh, statement to go and speak to some key stakeholders, and we will also be uh, in written contact with uh, other stakeholders as well today, and hopefully through their ne networks as well, they can make sure and help to make sure that as wide a, an ambit is is reached as possible. Kate Forbes, followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank you. One of the most significant developments in the last few decades has been online hate crime, which is utterly vile and yet underreported, in my view, because a lot of online abuse is accepted as just normal. So, will this review ensure that it's easier and more routine to report online hate crime, which is targeted at someone and motivated by prejudice, whilst more importantly safeguarding freedom of speech? Annabelle Ewing. Uh, th yes, I, I would say that the issue of online hate crime is really uh, quite fundamental now because, of course, so much activity take pla takes place online and that is the future. And therefore, it is obviously a, a, an important part of this review to look at uh, how effective our uh, legislative uh, uh, framework is in terms of dealing with uh, online hate crime at this point and what we could do to enhance uh, that uh, protection, uh, whilst, of course, recognising that uh, one of our very important rights is indeed the freedom of expression. I would say that, obviously, some online protection is provided in terms of Section 6 of the Offensive Behaviour at Football and Threatening Communications Act, and a simple repeal of that without anything else in its place would uh, take away protections that are currently in existence. Patrick Harvey, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you. I welcome this review and in particular the commitment that it will include consideration of a consolidated hate crime act, something that I thought was worth considering since Parliament passed my own members bill that became the 2009 Act. Uh, however, can I ask about the comments from the Minister that prior to the introduction of the Offensive Behaviour at Football and Threatening Communications Act, there was no specific offence in Scots law criminalising threats made with the intent of inciting religious hatred. The Minister describes this as an obvious gap. Isn't it more accurate to say that this was a choice that Parliament had consistently made by consensus that aggravation of existing offences was the way to go rather than the introduction of piecemeal incitement legislation? And can the Minister confirm that the review group will not be given any uh, preset assumptions or preconditions about the role that the government expects to see incitement to hatred legislation playing in future? Annabel Ewing. Uh, what I would say to the member is that obviously uh, that we've set the remit which is in Spice and Lord Brackadale will be carrying out the review and Lord Brackadale will determine where his review takes him and he is being tasked uh, in terms of the, the actual express remit to look at the important issue of statutory aggravations. This is an independent review and Lord Brackadale, one of the most experienced uh, uh, criminal law uh, and uh, practice uh, judges in Scotland will uh, take his review where he feels it needs to go to, to fulfil the remit, which is to see whether or not our body of law that uh, is piecemeal and uh, indeed I know that uh, Patrick Harvey had called for consolidation some years ago, uh, uh, quite rightly so, and therefore the uh, uh, 
the duty of Lord Brackadale is to look at the whole body of law to determine its effectiveness, its appropriateness in the context of 21st century Scotland. But I'm sure also he will be reading uh, the re official record of the debate today. And I know that Mr Harvey and his party will wish to feed into to the review as well. Liam MacArthur, followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Can I thank the Minister for early sight of uh, her statement? Also welcome the review as part of our ongoing efforts to bear down on hate crime in all its forms, and certainly the Scottish Liberal Democrats are more than happy to engage with Lord uh, Brackadale. In terms of um, specific questions, could, could the Minister advise the Chamber as to whether the Lord Advocate or indeed the Crown Agent has identified particular cases or types of cases that are not being uh, brought forward or not securing prosecution uh, given the current legal landscape? And can she also assure the Parliament that as part of this review, um, the uh, support available to victims, some of which is based through legislation, will also be uh, up for consideration. Annabel Ewing. Uh, well, I welcome uh, Liam MacArthur's uh, uh, constructive approach to the review as well, uh, and it's good to hear that he too will be quite happy to, to work with it. Um, in terms of uh, any cases, particular cases, uh, I'm not aware that the Lord Advocate has brought any uh, information to me, but I do think uh, it is timely to have a look at where we are with our hate crime law, because it's found in common law, it's found in statutes, and also, of course, as we've heard from Mr Har Harvey, there are a number of statutory aggravations. So I think it is timely to have this look at uh, the adequacy of our hate crime legislation uh, 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 in 21st century Scotland. On the issue of victim support, that, I guess, would not be a particular uh, element of the hate crime legislation that would probably fall directly within Lord Brackadale's remit, but obviously it is a matter for the government to continue mm. to look at that, and, and I, uh, I can assure the member that the Justice Portfolio will always continue to look at what more we can do to help victims. Rona Mackay, followed by Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Cabinet Minister if she agrees that more should be done to prevent homophobic, homophobic bullying at school, in light of the shocking statistics that 90% of LGBTI people have experienced homophobia, biphobia and transphobia at school. 27% of LGBTI people have attempted suicide once as a result of bullying, and 79% of teachers have asked support uh, asked supported the LGBTI Inclusive Education Initiative, known as TIE. Annabelle Ewing. Um, I would say to the member that obviously uh, every child should feel safe and respected at school and that is actually a duty that each one of us has to ensure happens. Um, in respect of the Thai camp campaign specifically, I would just uh, like to echo what the First Minister said at First Minister's questions last week, that the, there is indeed a, a commitment to take forward the issues that the Thai campaign has brought uh, to our attention uh, and that we would wish to do so in consultation with the excellent Thai campaigners. Jamie Green, followed by Pauline McNeill. Uh, it is fitting that today we discuss hate crime. It's just an hour ago I sat in this chamber and listened to some of the horrors of the Holocaust. And whilst hate itself will never go away, the means by which it manifests itself has changed dramatically. Can I ask the Minister, therefore, that whilst considering the issue of cyber abuse and online hate crime, will the review robustly and adequately ensure that offences like this are both recorded and dealt with properly? Annabel Ewing. Um, well, I, I guess uh, in terms of the review announced today that Lord Brackadale uh, will uh, uh, proceed with, uh, I guess the, the first task is to assess the adequacy and effectiveness of the legislation and the body of substantive hate crime law that is there. In terms of then the mechanics of ensuring that we have ways of uh, recording and reporting and, and uh, assessing if you like, how we are doing in the years going forward. Uh, that may be something Lord Brackadale wishes to get into, but equally, I suspect, it would more likely be for the government to consider at the end of the process when we receive the recommendations of Lord Brackadale. Pauline McNeill to be followed by John Mason. Uh, presiding officer, I welcome the minister's statement. Would the minister recognise that it, tackling hate crimes is not simply about framing the right laws, but resourcing services to implement the law? Will the Minister give a commitment that the Government will not rush to legislate for the sake of it? There are, however, as other members have highlighted, some areas where I think Lord Brackadale should, should look for review. Social attitudes to trans transgender people have improved, but they still face acute prejudice, and we know that there is severe underreporting. Uh, does, the does the Minister agree that in the area of transphobic hate crimes, this may be an area of interest to Lord Brackadale to examine whether there is a specific law needed for this purpose? Annabel Ewing. 
I, I would say to Pauline McNeill that I am, uh, first of all, the government at the end of this process will carefully consider the uh, recommendations, uh, any recommendations brought forward by Lord Brackadale. And I would also say that I, I would imagine that uh, the area that the member mentioned, transphobic hate crime, as well as any other area, will be areas indeed that the, the Lord Brackadale will wish to consider when looking at the adequacy of our hate crime, body of hate crime legislation in Scotland uh, in the 21st century. And the last of our questions is John Mason. Thank you. Um, one of the strengths of the Offensive Behaviour at Football uh, Act has been that it dealt with offensive behaviour at football, fairly obviously, uh, and in particular with sectarianism, anti-Irish racism and anti-Catholicism. Can the Minister assure us that uh, we will not be losing focus on these very, very important uh, issues? Annabel Ewing. Uh, uh, yes, the, the, the Lord Brackadale is, is commissioned to, to look at the adequacy of, of the body of hate crime legislation in Scotland, including, as I've mentioned, as part of that wider review, the Offensive Behaviour at Football and Threatening Communications Act. Of course, it remains on the statute until such time as it's not on the statute book. Uh, and finally, uh, I, I, as I mentioned in an answer to, I think, uh, Fulton uh, McGregor, uh, that uh, the focus we've had in terms of investing in, in funding for various uh, very important sectarian uh, projects to tackle sectarianism uh, has uh, been some 12.5 million over the last five years and we will consider how we take these projects forward uh, including working with Education Scotland to ensure that we have a national resource uh, embedded as part of our uh, 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 education uh, uh, system to ensure that tackling sectarianism remains very much uh, on the agenda in Scotland. That ends questions to the Minister. Thank you to everyone. I'll give a couple of moments for places to be changed.